tick, tick, booyah With this writ, get flipped straight to a uh. No more crawling, no more screw up Who was the amnesty of A? Now me, I'm mine Guard of my chest, I'm lord of the mind That I government Stand with the spine up, 100 men At the front line, stand 90 degrees No fear for machine, cause man is supreme Cause we come again you on your knees, the I recommend that things be revealed. Don't shy at the end, cause we got no beginning but the womb, and she not from here, baby. Set the moon or the tomb or the sun. How about all of the above? Tick, 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 tick booyah. It's time for we ya. Here I descend from a prodigy, the other means. Cause of them, now I gotta be solidly. And I represent right, moving left. Fool everybody but the moors, cause we made you. Son, I'm a star too. Ford of the L, right? Length with height. Home is the base, read safe, bring your light. Runway the night, Drew Circle the seven. Don't know, better start soon. Can't keep it real when your life in the cartoon. <laughs> Everything came free, but nigga, it'll cost you. Get with your nation and stay stateless. 14th Amendment, pointless to argue. Time ticks down, you're getting this cheated. Fully mistreated, though steady, just reaping, not grown, just leeching what's on with up rooms. Wake up, tick, 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 booyah. With this rip, get flipped straight to the No more crawling, no more screw up. Who up? Backing up frauds with cards national In Northwest, some ex, some Ottawa's not my capital Fez like a Merlin hat, I stay magical Stand on your birthright square, they label you radical Flow like libations, every day it's sabbatical I self law and master science mathematical It's tragical, dramatical This Moorish Othello, I rather black on black I don't do black and yellow Compass and square, fair trap, Masonic fellows and matrons Slew them, not just sodomites and pagans Most maroons need to stop Saying Jamaican and calling Euros American, they are Caucasian. Me, I'm a nine. I try to make a seven here, try to make a heaven here. Living in the devil's lair, freedom is a mental clear, color is a spectrum. Don't they see through spheres? Tunnel of mine is a bridge of program over there. In the spell with the magi, medium, playing good, but they really the bad guys. Feeling them, I'm reeling them. Cause I'm Moorish American, this is our land, and that's what we're inheriting. Thick, thick. Take booyah with this red get blessed straight to us. No more crow, no more screw up. Who was? Yo, yeah, it's me, Mr. L, Mr. Bro, Lord, Raw, Cal L. Apocalypse now. Watch the time tick, tick, then. Do not get preoccupied pointing your finger at the European even though he has an agenda. For it is many of your own who have been working with them to enslave you. Blog Talk Radio. Islam, Islam, Islam. Peace and love, family. It's your girl, Sharice L. Calling in from Northwest of Mexum. I hope all is well with everyone on this holy day. We have a special special show today. We got two prominent grand sheiks within the Morris Divine and National Movement able to extend their time to go into a very serious matter. Um, we're going to be talking about sovereignty. And uh, essentially what most people need to really understand about sovereignty, uh, they don't. So with the grand sheiks uh, of one from Canaan land, Canaan land Morris, Kuja Adwa El, and another Grand Sheik from uh, the Great Seal West, uh, Ramiel El Bay, they will be going in detail to make it very clear uh, for everyone to understand. So I'm going to um, invite my co-host in. Islam? Islam. Islam, Islam more. Islam, family, how are you? Peace, more peace. What's going on? <laughs> same old, same old, man. Um, I want to see um, one second. I want you, I want you guys to individually introduce yourself. So, um, Ramiel, uh, if you wouldn't mind, you know, just go ahead and um, you know tell the people a little bit about yourself and how you came into the movement. Brother Ramiel. 
Okay, I see that he is no longer on the line. I'm just going to wait for him to call back in. Brother Kujo, are you there? Islam. Okay, so I guess you can start off first. Please tell a little bit about yourself and um, how you came into the movement. Islam, Morris, peace and love. This is Kujo Adwo L. Um, came in just like everybody else. You know what I mean? Searching searching for information and happened to come across in in on my path, you know, individuals who, you know, did lectures and stuff like that. So they brought um Brother Shabazz from We Are the Washita. And that was that was you know a start, you know what I mean, um, through some back power people got got a hold of Aleem Bay's DVDs and Hakeem Bay's DVDs, you know those sat and sat in the vault because with a black state of mind didn't really understand what it was, um, and then connected with some mores on MySpace that basically said, well, why don't you just come to Chicago and see what what this is, opposed to talking about it on a computer or whatever. I'm like, all right, cool. I'll do that. You know, talk to my brother. He's gave me never been to Chicago before. All right, let's go. Jumped on the bus, 14-hour bus ride, and on a weekend – was on a weekend was convinced that there's nothing at all that matters than our people knowing this information about their nationality and birthrights. And since that time to now, here I am, still still here, after people fell off, after people said I'm agent and stuff like that, still here, repping for Noble Juali and the Marsh Divine and National Movement. And, you know, it's um it's an honor to be on the show and an honor to be next to the other individual that's gonna introduce himself if he's on the line yet. Brother Ramiel <laughs> Bay. Yes, I got him on. Brother Ramiel Bay, you back with us? <laughs> Islam, I am back. Islam. <laughs> trying to take myself off me. Islam, push the end call button. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, I got big it fingers. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right, but Islam, Ramiel, um, Islam, Noble. Brother Ramiel, you could tell us a little intro about yourself, how you came into the movement, you know, uh, just so, so the people could get familiar with who you are. Okay. Um, well, uh, I started out uh, also on the uh, pan Africanist, you know, list, um, you know, back in, um, actually in, I think it was 99, 98, somewhere around there. Um, the first time I heard about the Moors uh, was actually through uh, a song by uh, Raskan, Nature of the Threat. And that actually... Um, was actually a song that changed, literally changed my whole mindset towards everything. My whole paradigm, it shifted a paradigm. Now, it didn't shift me into complete consciousness, but it catapulted me into into understanding that, that all the history I learned, you know, was some BS. So <clears throat> over the course of years, you know, I studied off and on, um, just picking up books, reading things, you know, Red Antiquities of the Jews is uh, where I first learned that uh, um, I think it was Abraham was a uh, astrologer and learned and was uh, initiated into the schools of Hikukta. And, you know, so um, that was, you know, during the time I'm studying. Uh, and then eventually I bump into um, one of the videos by uh, Emir Tashri Bay and it was on the driver's license issue. And, um, you know, that was, some, you know, some years ago, bumped into that. 
And that completely shifted my, my focus into understanding birthright. And I always tell people that I did not know what the emir was speaking about. And, but based on his vibration, uh, his attitude, I knew that everything he said that came out of his mouth in that video was 110% true. And so I didn't even question it. But what I did do is I sat down, I took notes, and then I studied all the words that I didn't know that he used. I, you know, just cross-referenced referenced it and studied. And um, basically, <clears throat> it's been on and popping since then. And, you know, here, and I'm, you know, here years later today. Islam, Islam. All right, family. So essentially, with both of you guys, with you getting on the path of understanding your nationality and birthright, um, it seems as though it's it's for, for for the two of you guys has definitely been um, as Ramiel as Ramiel said a paradigm shift. But at the same time, there was an initiative. There is an initiative that you took upon yourself to actually um, take the time to understand what it was that was be, being broken down to you as far as civics, um, as far as understanding uh, yeah, what what's your true heritage, because we have been miseducated, we have been indoctrinated. This, these are things that we, as more as we know. And um, I find that oftentimes when people get into this information, they don't take on the responsibility of seeing how in order for your eyes to really be open and to stay open, it's like you, you have to be able to sharpen your own sword. So it's like when it comes to, when it came to being on, like once you got put on to nationality and birthright, was it difficult for either of you, uh, 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 Brother Kuja, I'm going to ask you first, was it difficult for you to stay on the path regardless of, you know, seeing, I'm sure you saw, like you said, different um, people fall at the wayside, essentially, you know what I mean? People um, trying to confuse the movement for what it is. Um, is there at any point where um, you doubted that this was possibly the right thing for you, like the right path? Um, it's not, it's not really doubt per se, um, more, more anticipation because the, the paradigm shift was into another dimension, not just mental. Like going from going from from being conscious, like knowing about, you know, Meru and you know, Buddhism, you know, across the board. Knowing about Nazis and MK Ultra and you know what I mean UFO sites. Who wonder about pyramids on Mars? Blacks were the first to know about stars and moons. When them goons round back, believe the world was flat. You see, stupidity is contagious, that's why they all racist. Giving Egyptian pharaoh statues faceless and murdering populations. Henchmen come through like invasions, turn them starters to Benjamin. We the enemy at the gates, causing confusion and tension. Not to mention at the entrance of the structure, false concrete slabs. Genetically bred for war, go fringe around henchmen flags, waving like Juve morning, swarming. We rapping popes and canvas, eluding cameras, secret under hench bandanas and rep Scarborough. Since the bagel, I rep Scarborough. Training for Armageddon to start spitting pig wigs like Fargo. In these newer years, we raise arms instead of gold tip spears. I like the skies like rah rahs, reflecting off dead men's tears. With a chain of ears, we step like walking tightrope to snipe folk. Picking off reverence like interceptions In this regional night and thick darkness We spark flips, holes and targets I haul your carcass into the golden soul and sarcophagus Black apocalypse Fly your head like rocket ships And stand by the river now Bank and chant henchmen Things and whatever Knowing all those things there 
and then realizing that there's there's an untapped wealth, you know, and and it reminds me of the the story of the they had um the in one of these Filipino um the countryside whatever they had this wealth, and these people were living to be like 120 years old or whatever. And nobody could figure yeah. out. Then they realized that there was a goji berry tree above the well. And the goji berries were falling in the well. And that's what it was. So mm-hmm. you, you, get, you get to this untapped well that when you, when you really look at it, it's all the stuff that you were studying from before, but package better so that you can see what fits where. It's not just scrambled info all over the place. Right? So getting on this information and then the things that were happening while I'm studying this information that never happened when I studied the other stuff. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you're, you're For example, you're reading about about spirits and entities and you know other beings, and then you go on the bus and the driver tells you that they were reading that same book without you talking to them about it or whatever. They were reading that same book and they think that. You know, you should continue reading that book because, you know, it's leading you in the right direction or whatever. Just because of studying this information. Those type of things never happened, studying everything else. So it was it was more a uh, excitement of, okay, like how, how, much, how much stuff could really happen? Like how far could this go as far as studying this information? You know, mm-hmm. I mean? you know because it was it was highly... It was highly a spiritual thing, you know. It was it was so beyond just definitely getting, spoke getting to information. You. Yeah, so the divine definitely spoke to you, um, predominantly um, getting into this information. Like that was the portion that you you absorbed yourself into. Is that is that accurate to say? It, it, it's just it's just what what it was. There, there was nothing else. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, like I always use, you know, like, you know, use Jordan for example. There was nothing else but basketball. Marriage didn't even matter. Children didn't even matter. It didn't matter. I'm gonna be the mm. best at this thing right here, and then that's and then that's it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? That was his fo- That was his focus. Right? Like this is what this is. The only difference is that this is life. This is not do this for 40 years and then retire and sit back like, yeah, you know, we were the Moors in, you know, till 2028, whatever like that. You know, this mm-hmm. is life. And I realized that this, yeah. was like, this was really life. Like this wasn't just something out of a book. This was actually something that was applicable just because you know it. Right. Not because you read it somewhere. But because you know it, just like what um, Grand Chief said with with the Taj, like I had the same, the same driver's license fraud and and you know those, those era classes. I had those classes sitting down for about a year and a half because the first one I put in, like everything went over my head, like there was nothing at all that stuck, that registered, that made me say, go check this, whatever, like that. I was just like, I don't know who this dude is, but I have to come back to check this some other time because I'm not ready for this yet. Just because of the energy of right. what was being said. Mm-hmm. Not even knowing what's being said. Not even comprehending the sentences that are coming out of his mouth. But the you energy, just to the energy the time. yeah. 
the energy what it was, it was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to put this down or whatever over here, and let me just grab another DVD out of these hundreds of DVDs and just look at something else, mm-hmm. you know? But, yeah, um, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop. I couldn't. I just couldn't. I felt bad if I stopped. Right. Grand Sheik Romeo. Grand Sheik, I'm um sorry to cut you with them. I just wanted to hear, um was that was that a similar experience for you, Grand Sheik Romeo, as um getting onto this information and like was it something that you felt at any moment that you could turn your back on? Uh no. No, it, it you know, the interesting thing um, that even I know, noted about myself when I was younger is that um, there was a couple of things that took place in, in, in my adolescence and in my um, growing up, you know, mid-20s, is that I left being a Jehovah's Witness because <clears throat> at one portion, one part of it, or one of the reasons was that I wasn't going to be a hypocrite. I feel like being a Jehovah's Witness, it was restraining. And so based on how you're taught, um, once I, I was not going to um, sustain uh, uh, or, you know, be asking, excuse me, from certain things, I stopped being a witness because I did not, I didn't want to live that life. That just, I'm like, I'm not going to do it, but I've never been one to be a hypocrite. And if you go to the publication section, that was Rocco, my dog, by the way. Uh, it's about the year 2000, I believe it was. There is a book called You Can Be God's Friend. Now, if you flip over to Lesson 9, uh, just take a look at this for a second. Uh, it says that Jesus is Jehovah's closest friend, just like the angels are also God's friends. And God's friends on earth are called witnesses. Just shameless, unusual doctrine and propaganda, but... Putting that aside, if we look at the arm position on the top left, hold on, let me zoom in here. Now, if you look real close, you'll see the right arm is up, the left arm is down. Let me get a little closer. Now, is there anything significant about a deity sitting on a throne and having his arms in just that position? Well, let's take a look at a couple other pictures that I've brought in. And let's see if we can figure out any correlations here and why they would do it like this. Now here's an actual photo of the unveiled satanic statue, but I'll get a more clearer rendition of it. Now notice here quickly that he's got one arm pointing up, one arm pointing down. And this actually represents a satanic philosophy called as above, so below. Here we have what's commonly known as the magician, which is a representation of the philosophy of as above so below here's an example of the deities that those who practice these demonic philosophies come up with as above so below we see the right arm and the left arm here here's a recent movie called as above so below so it's not just with the arms that you can symbolize this philosophy but also with drawings where something's right side up and upside down so there's a lot of ways and this is a very popular and well-known philosophy among those who practice these secret society type religions and cults. Now take a look again, look really closely at how similar they are. Why would the Watchtower's artists put something like this in our books? Something that is Gnostic, Masonic, Satanic, and make it out in their God. And so for me, I left that. When I came into um, the knowledge, you know, through the realm of Pan-Africanism, it didn't help me um, circle my square, and it didn't help me, you know, um, you know, square my conduct. It was just something that, you know, I was learning. It was good. Um, it can it helped me connect uh, with my people. You know, it helped me. Um, Learn some 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 knowledge. When I came in contact with the um, Moore's Divine National Movement, as as I began to study, it began to allow me not to restrain myself, but it taught me how to be myself. 
And that was something that I had 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 been missing, you know, throughout my life. It literally taught me how to be myself. And it taught me how, you know, to uh, square my conduct. And so for me, because I've always been, you know, someone who I, I am a living example of what I know on, on, um, or I just don't even profess to know it. That's just who I am. I'm not mm-hmm. going to even let you know that I know something if I'm not living that way. Whereas with this information, there has not been one time where I've doubted the information, where I've doubted it being the truth, whether I've, you know, doubted the historical um, re- uh, references or relevance to us. It never has happened. Um, the only thing that it does do is make me want to continue to dig deeper because I know that even with the knowledge that's out there, it's less than 1% of 1% or one-tenth of a percent of the information. There's so much deeper uh, that we can go, you know, especially on the spiritual mm-hmm. side. So for me, it, 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 I've never doubted. Like, I've never thought about stepping away. Even when you see the condition of our people, um, there's times where in the past it, it begins to get, it can be overwhelming, you know, because of your love for your people and you see their condition. But then it's that love for your people uh, and knowing their condition that actually works to be the propeller for you to keep going, mm-hmm. you know. Indeed. Um, indeed, indeed. I mean, I'm, it's, it's, it's a, essentially what you guys are saying, what I'm hearing is that with more science, it, it was um, the red pill for you. You know, like the, the deeper you go, the more you get into the information, uh, the the wide, the deeper the rabbit hole, you know what I mean? Essentially, because it's like I can I can testify to how um, coming into this movement, I have not found anything that can even resemble the blueprint that Noble Jew Ali has laid down, you know. And um, for me, the impact that it had for me, the paradigm shift that occurred for me um, occurred back in 2013, 2014, around that time. And I remember around the summer of 2014, I was just like, okay, like, like, this is it. This, like, this, this is it. You know what I mean? And, and, and you can't, um, it's almost like it's undescribable to put how to encompass this other than to just state it as more a science. Like that is how um, vast this information is and how there's, there, it's like, it's funny because there's really no, there's no synonym to it. You know, there's so many things, there's so many terms that you can um, try to substitute a thing with, but when it comes to nationality and birthrights of the al Moroccans. Morris science is that is that term that we uh, state to encompass the information that we know, our heritage, our lineage, our culture, um, our science, obviously, and hence Morris science. Um, and it's funny because you see so many other cultures that are practicing Morris science, but just under a different terminology you know, such as um, Scientology, uh, you know, Brother Kuja, I've seen you put that on the record, how uh, Farrakhan, um, what he, he stated something about Scientology, and you put it out there, how Peter Moon in his book, um, um, can you quote the reference for me? Um, um, I'm talk Book of the Dead. Peter Moon? Montauk, Book of the Dead, yes, how he states that Scientology is more science. I mean, like, you see all these Europeans focusing, honing in on more science thanks to Tom Cruise, <laughs> you know what I mean, jumping on the sofa on, Oprah's, uh, on the Oprah show a, a few years back. Everybody started gravitating to cosmetology, not understanding that they were driven to that um, because under underlying all of that Scientology is the basis of civilization, which is essentially more in science, you know. And I think that is so impactful 
I think that that's something that people really do need to understand. But um, just to get into the topic, you know, the topic of discussion. And first off, it's part of me for not um, giving due honors and praise to Prophet Noble Ju Ali, all the Moors who are in um, in attendance this evening. I want to thank you for lending your energy. I want to thank you for calling in, uh, tuning into the blog talk show. Um, the chat room is open. My apologies for not having opened it at the starting of the show. If you would, if you refresh your page, I'm sure um, the chat room uh, will present itself. Uh, but it is open. So if you have any questions, you know you're probably too shy to come on the line. If you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat box, and I will um, ask it for you. Um, but yes, back to the topic at hand, which is sovereignty. Um, now this is a term Sorry, that um, Islam says one sec before you, mm. before you, um, continue, um, just to put something on the record when, when you were talking about more science, yeah. people also have to be clear that more science temple of America doesn't own the term more science. Islam. It's not it's it's not copywritten by Morris Science Temple, so don't Islam. don't feel like you can't use that to describe everything that you're learning that's helping you be a better citizen. Because that's the Chewy, point of Morris Science, right? So just wanted to put that out there, just so that people know, right? Yes. Morris, Morris Divine and National Movement founder, Noble Juali, brought the term Morris Science to the Morris. Indeed. But that term isn't owned by the organization, religious corporation or whatever, Morris Science Temple of America. Islam. Just to, just to clarify, Sheikh, uh, uh, Grand Sheikh Kujo, um, when it comes to the, um, the, the, the Morris Science Temple of America, um, and the distinguishment of more Science Temple America and the more Divine National Movement, it seems that the um, more Divine National, the, the more Divine and National Movement is the umbrella for the more to be um, protected under. And the vehicle in which to drive the movement forward was supposed to be the temple. The Moore Science Temple of America. Um, or or more Science Temple of America. Is that why the prophet established? Mm-hmm. Please, please elaborate. No, I was saying, and, and more Holy Temple of Science, not just more Science Temple. Indeed. Under under the umbrella. Under and the, the manufacturing umbrella. companies. Indeed. And the manufacturing companies and the community center and Unity Hall, and all the temples in all the states or whatever. It's crazy. All this right? industry, all those all things this were under the umbrella. All, all these industrious uh, uh, businesses that was established, what, what happened to them? You have to ask the people who's in charge of the movement now. Uh, all right. The people, who claim, well, the people who claim supreme supreme titles and stuff like that. Because they're the only ones that would know. They, 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 they're supposed to have the records and the books and stuff according to them. Grand Sheik Ramiel, would you concur? Islam. Uh, well, you know, I would concur with everything you all just said. I think that that confusion, and um, you know, it's unfortunate confusion because all it's doing is, you know, stopping um, stopping unity. Uh, but more science, if we go into even um, understanding or going into reading the literature, you know, the Moorish literature, when the prophet talks about um, our illustrious Moorish history, and, when you, you know, when we get into the things that, um, you know, George G.M. James says, you know, about the Moors and stolen legacy being the custodians of the ancient knowledge that was taught in Ikuta, when you get into the knowledge that we brought into um, an Andalusia, when you get into those things, uh, we're talking about mathematics, cosmology, you know, several liberal arts, vibration, 
um, all those different things, and that's that's more science. What's happened is that based on the infiltration, you know, and great sellout, is that in truth, not most of your temples, or let me say a great deal of your temples, are not truthfully teaching more science. They're teaching, they've, they've um, acquiesced into teaching dogma, just like the other um, religions. And that's not, that is not all um, temples. You know, there are some temples who are uh, very honorable uh, in their teaching, but that's been part of the issue. And so you have um, those who have carried the light. And it's interesting because this was crossing my mind earlier, uh, this very topic is that you had people who continued to carry the banner and carry the light. And, and in truth, um, although those who would like to discredit um, those other light bearers, if it wasn't for people such as uh, C.M. Bay, um, such as Emir Tashirik Bay, um, in many cases the temples wouldn't have people in them today. You know, it, it is... Mm-hmm. Um, CM Bay and Great Seal um, is is known more than most of the Grand Chiefs inside the temple. Mm. Uh, Emir Taj Sharif Bay is more well known than most of the Grand Chiefs inside the temple. And so you have this conflict that's really juvenile in its essence in the first place that's taking place. Um, but no, you know, there is no ownership of the Moore's Divine National Movement. There's no ownership of the term Moore's Science, um, nor is there an ownership of Moore's Science, it, you know, itself belonging to the temples. It's, it, you know, it's really an um, idiotic angle in which, you know, a lot of people come from. You know, those who wish to dis- discredit those who are actually doing the real work will come with those, um, you know, those silly childish, uh, like antics on people's uh, posts and, you know, things like that, and we see them every day, and it's unfortunate. Indeed it is. Indeed it is. And one, and one thing to add on, when you say, when when the more says the real work, right, the real mm-hmm. work is uplifting fallen humanity. Indeed. That's why yes. somebody like CM Bay's literature is more known than some grand chief literature because his literature is in the Library of Congress. Everybody has access to that. Half these grand chief literature is only available in their temple. True. You have to be a member. Which is which is really a disservice. Because they're supposed to be every every single grand chief of the Morris Science Temples of America, Morris Holy Temple of whatever, is supposed to be as popular as Taj to be. Right. We're not, we're not, we're not Booth and Taj. Those other people are supposed to be just as popular as him. If they're claiming and that why, they're more science simple. Would you say that um, they're not as popular because of, well, uh, uh, of course, like you stated, because of the membership qualification uh, that they they stipulate um, when they have people no, no, come no, into these not temples? No, e- not even that. Yeah, not even that. Is because they're passive. Uh, they're, they're in the temple, right? They're in the temple. It's time to do something. They go, you know what I mean, do something, and then they go back to the temple. How many grand sheiks could say they went from state to state to state doing lectures in open form, not temple to temple, but getting a call from somebody. Hey, I want you to come here, come teach, because we saw your class or something like that, and we want you to come teach us some stuff. Find me how many grand sheiks made those, you know what I mean, rounds. Very few. Very few. I got two of the rare ones on the phone with me right now. Right? Very few. For real. And and it comes back to that same thing, that the, the, the purpose of this is get the information to the people. Mm-hmm. It's not to debate about what, what, what's, what's what, who's who, who's dirty, who's whatever, because really and truly we all have the same info. So what, what, like, what, what do you mean? You know, like, like, yeah, like even, even, even dealing with this, 
that, that we're dealing with today. You know what I mean? Right? Like, how, how are you going to be against this? It's part of the truth. Sure. But we'll break it down. We don't get, we don't get ahead of myself. <laughs> For sure, man. I mean, <laughs> no, nah, because a, it's, it's like it, it becomes it becomes a um. It, it's like it's almost as if you can't help yourself. You can't you can't help but try to want to put that the the the, the, the make it very clear, and make it so so blunt that people can't even split hairs with it about what this movement is. And for there to be a division as severe as it is, I mean, it's, it's, it's shame on us for allowing this to, 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 to occur. You know what I mean? Shame on us now um, for the fact that collectively we're not where we should be 103 years later. You know, yes, we can blame um, selected elders of the past, you know, but at the same time, you can only blame the past for so much, and responsibility needs to be put in the hands of the individual who knows this information and doesn't do anything about it. That is our problem in this movement, where people want to essentially leech off of what it is that we're supposed to be bestowing onto the people because it is theirs to have, you know, it's not supposed to be taxed. It's not supposed to um, a secret society agenda. That's not what this is supposed to be about. It's not. And um, this topic of sovereignty, you know, it seems redundant. It seems redundant. I was speaking with another, with the, with the more earlier today. And it's like, you know, um, how many times you got to go over sovereignty. And it's like, I mean, as many times as it takes for these people to get it. Because even now when you speak of, um, you know, the past, the, the past few years, I've seen more um, have to go over the oxymoron um, term sovereign citizen, Right. But it's like now they have this term called sovereign individual standing their own right, their own sovereignty, you know, just solo, almost on a cowboy uh, mentality, how they did back in the day. Um, you know, they'll just pretty much handle their business mano y mano, right? And, um, I mean, I see, I see pros and I see cons in that approach, but when it comes to a sovereign nation, there's so much more that can be applicable. It's it's like why 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 fight that? Why fight having the chance to commune with your brothers and sisters? You know? So again, yeah, we're gonna go into the topic of sovereignty and I just want to start off by defining what sovereignty is, because most don't know. So I have my Black's Law Dictionary here, fourth edition. You know, it's standard. Like fourth, the fourth edition is uh, pretty much standard. The standard edition of the uh, Black's Law Dictionary, which more study from. Of course, you should have um, an extended library of dictionaries, but um, the go-to is the fourth edition. All right, and I'm looking for um, looking at the term. Um, Sovereignty, and I'm just going to read the first paragraph, and it states, the supreme, absolute, and uncontrollable power by which any independent state is governed, supreme political authority, paramount control of the Constitution and frame of the government and its administration, self-sufficient source, political power, from which all specific political powers are derived the international independence of a state combined with the right and power of regulating its internal affairs without foreign dictation, right? Now, what I'm seeing in here, my stuff, just off of the first, just off of the first sentence, I'm seeing it says, the supreme, absolute, and uncontrollable power by which any independent 
state is governed. Now, my question to you is, can this be this term sovereignty? Can an individual use it? Or must it be with a state, as in a nation state? Grand Chief uh, Ramiel, would you like to ask, uh, answer that first? Islam. Okay, so <clears throat> when you when we get into, or let me answer your question directly. Can it be? Did you said can it be an individual, or what was the second part? Right. Can can sovereignty be applicable to an individual, or must it be um, with a nation or a state? Must it be with a state, like an actual state, such as in a, a nation state? Okay. So the concept of individual sovereignty. Okay. Individual sovereignty. The 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 concept itself. And I'm going to, if you will allow me, there's a an article I wrote about a year ago, um, I think for one of the temples to put in their newspapers. And I have it pulled up. I'll read it whenever you um, allow me time to read it, where I go into explaining the difference and, you know, all those things. Now, <clears throat> the sovereignty in itself is not invested in the individual, even on a um, universal natural law standpoint. It doesn't exist. Okay. So when we're looking at everything, everyone is governed by law. So even the absolute thought process of being a sovereign person doesn't exist on the planet. Because no matter what you claim, you're governed by universal law. What do you want to do tonight? Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. The 12 laws that governs our universe. 1. The law of divine oneness. The first out of the 12 universal laws helps us to understand that we live in a world where everything is connected to everything else. Everything we do, say, think and believe affects others and the universe around us. 2. The law of vibration. This law states that everything in the universe moves, vibrates, and travels in circular patterns. The same principles of vibration in the physical world apply to our thoughts, words, feelings, and desires in the etheric world. Each sound, thing, and even thought has its own vibrational frequency, unique unto itself. 3. The Law of Action. The law of action must be applied in order for us to manifest things on earth. Therefore, we must engage in actions that support our thoughts, dreams, emotions and words. 4. The Law of Correspondence. This law states that the principles or laws of physics that explain the physical world, energy, light, vibration, and motion, have their corresponding principles in the etheric or universe, as above, so below. 5. The Law of Cause and Effect. This universal law states that nothing happens by chance or outside the universal laws. Every action has a reaction or consequence and we reap what we have sown. 6. The Law of Compensation. This law is the law of cause and effect applied to blessings and abundance that are provided for us. The visible effects of our deeds are given to us in gifts, money, inheritances, friendships, and blessings. 7. The Law of Attraction. This law demonstrates how we create the things, events, and people that come into our lives. Our thoughts, feelings, words, and actions produce energies which, in turn, attract like energies. Negative energies attract negative energies and positive energies attract positive energies. 8. The Law of Perpetual Transmutation of Energy. This 8 out of the 12 universal laws is a powerful one. It states that all persons have within them the power to change the conditions in their lives. Higher vibrations consume and transform lower ones, thus, each of us can change the energies in our lives by understanding the universal laws and applying the principles in such a way as to effect change. 
9. The Law of Relativity. This law states that each person will receive a series of problems, tests of initiation, for the purpose of strengthening the light within. We must consider each of these tests to be a challenge and remain connected to our hearts when proceeding to solve the problems. This law also teaches us to compare our problems to others' problems and put everything into its proper perspective. No matter how bad we perceive our situation to be, there is always someone who is in a worse position. It is all relative. 10. The Law of Polarity This law states that everything is on a continuum and has an opposite. We can suppress and transform undesirable thoughts by concentrating on the opposite pole. It is the law of mental vibrations. 11. The Law of Rhythm This law states that everything vibrates and moves to certain rhythms. These rhythms establish seasons, cycles, stages of development, and patterns. Each cycle reflects the regularity of God's universe. Masters know how to rise above negative parts of a cycle by never getting too excited or allowing negative things to penetrate their consciousness. 12. The Law of Gender This last out of the 12 universal laws states that everything has its masculine, yang, and feminine, yin, principles, and that these are the basis for all creation. The spiritual initiate must balance the masculine and feminine energies within herself or himself to become a master and a true co-creator with God. Now on a mundane sense, what an individual, and it's interesting in my class last night, someone just um, approached me with this very same question, um, and I had to explain it to him. What individuals who are attempting to claim the sovereign, um, be sovereign people or sovereign person are claiming is that um, they have no allegiance to the government and the government has no control over them. And it's an oxymoron. So, you know, to be, there's no such thing as a sovereign citizen. To be a, so, a citizen it, in itself says that you have an attachment to, to something. There's an attachment. And so sovereignty has never, ever on this planet been invested in an individual. It, it, it has never existed, literally, never existed. What What is happening is that people are taking these concepts from agents, that people have infiltrated the movement, and they're allowing these concepts to become an influence in how they see um, separating from the matrix. A lot of these people, you know, have good intentions. A lot of them are still, you know, new in their studies and find themselves listening because the information is so plentiful, but it's also not filtered. And because it's not filtered, you know, you have very articulate people who are on YouTube generally, who are speaking of 9-8 numbers, who are speaking of, you know, uh, claiming your uh, estate, claiming your sesquicue, view trust. They're very articulate. And so because they're articulate, it's hard sometimes if you're not studied to see through the fraud. And so the people are getting caught up. But to be clear, sovereignty only exists within a people. Mm-hmm. And, and, and this, is, this is ancient. This is an ancient principle. It's not modern. It's not contemporary. These are our ancient principles. There is no one unless the only way to have a slight mundane um, sense of uh, capacity of sovereignty is to be completely nomadic. To be a nomad. And so you have to, you would literally have to live out somewhere where you're not in contact with the rest of the world. Because once you walk into someone else's territorial jurisdiction, your sovereignty is gone. So you have to go live out in the bushes or trees somewhere, and, and, and that's, that's where you're going to find um, a portion of, of, man, of mundane sovereignty. Other than that, it doesn't exist. 
Are right, you up the floor? Islam, Islam, for the Cujo, I I pass the same question to you. Um, what are your statements on um, a sovereign individual? Is that is that like as as Grand Chief Ramiel says, is that an oxymoron, uh, synonymous to a sovereign citizen? Um, well, if we if we put it put it in in these terms. Um, the only way someone can be a sovereign individual, right? The only way someone can be a sovereign individual is if they are super. Now, the reason I say that is because the the etymology of sovereign comes from Uper, U-P-E-R, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where you get super from. Mm-hmm. Now, super man was an L, right? He is, yeah. So Superman is an L. So the only way you can be a, be a sovereign individual is if you're equal to Superman. <laughs> if we go if we go by the language. Indeed. And we use that Indeed. as an example. Because if they're using L in the movie, then it's not fiction. Mm-hmm. If they're saying this is a movie, but they're they're saying it's not real that guy can't fly and stop trains and stuff like that. But his name's L, and then you can research L, and it's something that's real. Then that movie's not just fiction, mm-hmm. right? So Shoot that fall, and then back to, right, and then back to with what Brother Ramiel is saying is that if you don't have people. Right, then there's no nation because you're not going to have a fez without a guy to make it. You're not going to have a flag without an individual to make it. You're not going to have a nation without people. Mm-hmm. So, so it's 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 and and. Another another thing that the thing that you see people on Moorish world fighting, right? When they when they talk negative about Moors and they bring up Taj Street Bay, no, they're supposed to bring up the Moors that Ramel is talking about that are doing mm-hmm. the UCCs and all those type of BS there, and then mm-hmm. trying to do the whole I'm sovereign thing, and then those individuals are looking at. The, the the Moors that are active and civic minded and tying them to Moors who are doing the sovereign individual but they can't fly. <laughs> sovereign individual but they they're not gonna stop a train by jumping in front of it. But they're sovereign individuals though. Right? Those are the individuals that they should be calling out. Sure, the individuals that are pushing this whole, um, you know, go get your whatever authenticated so you can be a sovereign individual and have control over a straw and control over this and control over that because you're the sovereign now. That's not us because, you know, Ms. Brought a, brought a good one last night that, you know, if you're a sovereign citizen, Where's the sovereign country? Where's the country called sovereign that you're a citizen of? If you're a sovereign individual, what's that sovereign thing? Like what? Because sovereign is just a word. Mm -hmm. What's tied to, to that word sovereign that makes you say I'm sovereign as an individual? 
Mm-hmm. And if and if people aren't backing it, then it's useless. This is what this is why Noble Jualis told us L, Bay, Fezes, Turbans, Flag, whatever, so we can so we can see that we're a people. Mm-hmm. So we can see that we're a nation. Not that there's a nation, oh yeah, let's go be part of the nation, we're going to proclaim our nationality, run to the nation. Right? The people make up the nation. If, if, if easy people run in toward the nation, know that there's probably a cliff somewhere. Don't follow those people. Because the people are the nation. And once the people realize that the people are the nation, then they'll realize what sovereignty is. Islam, Islam. Essentially, what I'm what I'm getting is, you know, um, with this concept of sovereign individual, um, as you said, unless they have this superpower to be sovereign and really withstand um, certain impacts on their own, you know what I mean? It's a, it's like once once you die, then then that's it. Nothing get passed on. Nothing, nothing, nothing moves further or, or moves forward after you, as a sovereign individual. You're standing alone, solo, completely alone. And you know, just to 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 camel back off for of what Ramiel said, it's like when you walk into you know um, someone else's territory, something you know, a sovereign nation's territory. It's like you're you're going to be under the law of that sovereign of that sovereign land so it's like is there re- is it i mean this is a concept that people really need to think about is it something that is realistic to be when you in comparison to a sovereign nation and then you really start to see why the prophet was pushing nationality and how we need to natural uh nationalize so bad not naturalize nationalize and we've already discussed that you know anybody who haven't i'm sure you can go on either one of our um youtube channels you'll be able to find it all right renowned royalty um on youtube you can google canaan land mourns or mo bay on YouTube, and you will find the conversation that we had on nat- um, naturalization versus nationalization. But again, you know, it's it's um, it gets to be it's disturbing almost when someone speaks about sovereignty and don't see how when you're within your nation, that is where the supreme power lies. You know what I mean? There's power in numbers. And when it comes to our ancestral customs, one of the oldest Moorish proverbs is, many hands make light work. So as you stated, Kuja, you know, we need people. We're going to need people to make the feathers. We need people to make the flags. We need people to um, be the network. You need people to be to, to be sovereign. You need that. To have absolute supreme power, you need numbers. You know. Oh, and and, okay, and speaking about see. that, just before I yeah. just before I forget, since you brought up, not not saying that there aren't people that don't do those things. Islam to brother Cosmo L, that's you know a fez manufacturer for Mars. Indeed. Right. So that so that you know pe- people can see that Mars are a nation mm-hmm. because they're making their they're making their own stuff because he's a representative from Mars all over he's not just for mm-hmm. where he's at right exactly. there's Mars all over who have feathers from him right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so I just wanted to put that out there that you know don't don't think that you know when we say you know 
um, the people are the nation and people to make flags and make that we don't have people that do that. We have people that do that. Which is proof of a nation. In itself. Which is proof of a nation. Which is proof mm-hmm. that there is. Now, now, keep in mind now, if there's proof that there's a nation, then that proves that there's sovereignty. Islam. It might not be able to be exercised by an individual. But mm-hmm. if that individual is tied a nation their reach with sovereignty is further. Indeed. You're going to get away with some stuff playing sovereign individual, but that's only going to last for so long. Because as soon as they mm-hmm. realize that you're not a nation, now, now you're, you know, you're, you're a patriot. Mm-hmm. That's that's why Moore is not supposed to say that they're gonna expatriate out of some U dot S and, and file UCCs. Because when you expatriate, you're saying you're a patriot. Frightening videos, training for assaults, firing weapons. All the more scary to Jane and Bruce Holy, who found out about the Hutari from news reports, went to a website to look them up and literally saw their neighbors practicing war on tape. There's things on the website showing all this training, and it's obviously, we can pick out landmarks. Oh, yeah. It was done in our neighborhood. So yeah. this training or military filming that they were doing, although you didn't know it was happening, we it was happening right there. It was happening right, you know, right there. And one shot is them walking down the street with all their guns and everything. It's like, how did we not know? It was, yeah. how did we not know? What they didn't know was that members of the Hatari militia allegedly were preparing for a major battle against their own country, describing themselves as Christian warriors. They have used their website to declare war on law enforcement and all foot soldiers of the federal government. According to that website, they're driven by biblical teachings they believe command Christians to take up arms in defense of the one true Church of Christ. How attacking the federal government fits into that plan is unclear. This weekend, authorities moved in on this set of trailers in a rural corner of Michigan and arrested 45-year-old David Bryanstone, the man identified as the group's leader, also known as Captain Hutari. Stone's wife, Tina, was also arrested, as was his 19-year-old son, David Bryanstone, Jr., All told, eight members of the group were rounded up over the weekend. The ninth, Joshua Matthew Stone, arrested Monday night. Prosecutors allege the group was plotting to kill a police officer, then set off bombs at the funeral in order to kill even more law enforcement agents. David Bryan Stone's ex-wife was not surprised by his arrest. Yeah, he's got a temper. He can get radical, and he wants things done his way. But the younger Stone's fiance said he had done nothing wrong. My fiance hasn't been in it, but because we had a baby together. And once we had a baby and we got engaged, he stopped doing it for a while. John Josh Stone, the man arrested last night, should be in court today. The rest of them will be back in court tomorrow. Hopefully we can find out more about what they were planning and, and I think more importantly, what their real capability was in carrying out this bizarre plot. Yeah, as, as the militia leader we talked to earlier said, didn't know about the capability of the entire militia, but thought that maybe the leader was something of a wild card. Drew Griffin for us this morning. Drew, thanks so much. You're saying that you are actually against what was established. Because you shouldn't really be filing any UCC anything. What you should really be doing is proclaiming your nationality. Mm. If you want to be Mm -hmm. a sovereign, whatever. Indeed. You know. All right, family. I am going. Yes, I am going to um, open the phone lines because I do see. A, co- a few hands raised, and um, I know that now, you know I put it out there. Islam. Yeah. Before we open the phone line, um, can I go ahead? Can I read this uh, this letter, this article? Oh yes, please, so that yes, we can yes, clear up the concepts um, before we do that, because people are going to ask questions uh, <laughs> that I think this will. Sure, indeed. 
<laughs> Should we be okay, family? So we're gonna let you read the article, and after the article, uh, we'll 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 take the question. So anybody who do have a question, you know, please press one in the queue so that I can see you, and um, I will answer them um in chronological order as as the hands are raised, I will answer them. So, um, brother Ramiya, please yes, read your article. Okay, so this was for, um, I think it was a Moore's God article that came out of, uh, for one of the temples uh, in Mecca last year that I had wrote, but it was questioning whether the Moore's Divine National Movement or Great Order of the Great Seal was a part of the sovereign citizen movement. That's what the, the whole article uh, that they asked me to write was about. So Rooted in the miseducation and lack of knowledge of history, law, codes of civilization is the common misunderstanding that the Moore's Divine National Movement and or Great Seal is connected interchangeable with the European Sovereign Citizen Movement because this has been widely speculated and misunderstood issue which holds great importance to us as, a Moore's, as Moore's Americans. It is the, of the utmost importance that we clear it up and understand not only our position but the position of of others in respect to this issue. The European sovereign citizen movement is not a new concept and is one that dates back thousands of years. It went understood in its proper context. Because of their own continual enslavement on this planet, the Albion domestic has long searched for independence and sovereignty. The search begins with their many migrations that resulted in the many wars on the planet between them and the Moabites. It is this thirst for sovereignty, blood, and survival that has helped continue the long wars between ancient Moabites and Albion. It is the constant fear of oppression and extinction that pushes the continual quest of world power, i.e. European sovereignty, colonization. But it is with this scope that we must understand their current push to escape oppression, which has culminated in what is termed the European Sovereign Citizen Movement, the Tea Party, militia, militia groups, etc., the current European sovereign citizen movement takes its concepts from the party Comitatus, which merged ideology of the Christian identity movement, and then pastor Henry Lamont Beach. This movement pushed the ideology that Albion's were the original Israelites and the current and that the current Jews were the children of Satan. Under this banner of supremacy, they pushed for many of the same fundamental ideals as their brethren, the Ku Klux Klan and Aryan Brotherhood. Although the difference of fundamental understanding of law is what would, would set them apart, Hasi Kometeus believed that the highest level of government existed at the county level and that the Sharif was the highest authority within the county and was charged with protecting the rights of the people. If he, she failed at their duties, they could be hung by the people. The symbol of the Posse Comiteus movement was, is the Sharif's badge and noose. Most of the ideological teachings of the Posse were built on violent oppression of the de facto government authority oppression. This resulted in many altercations with federal and local level officials since the original formation in the 1960s. As aforementioned, this state of affairs with the Albion is not new. It is these same pushes for independence from governments considered tyrannical that led to the Charter of the Force, the Magna Carta, the First Burns War, English Civil War, etc. The individual sovereignty of the citizen was and always the issue. During the time of the Civil War on these lands of a maxim against the brutish British, the issues was the same. It was the push for their independence from the government they deemed tyrannical. Many have falsely claimed and conjectured that the Order of the Great Seal and or the more divine national movement order are offshoots of the European sovereign citizen movements, especially with the specific teachings of Great Seal, has a connection been drawn to be similar by many who will wish to discredit and dishonor Great Seal and the more divine national movement, as well as Prophet Noble Drew Ali himself. For the erudite scholar, the vast differences are clear and concise and concisely show a difference that is unmistakable. The very essence of the term sovereignty and its application deals with self-government and self-rule without the impotence of, of another government. Black Star Dictionary, uh, fourth edition, defines sovereignty as a supreme, absolute, and uncontrollable authority, 
power of which an independent state is government, supreme political authority, paramount control of the Constitution and frame of government and its administration, the self-sufficient source of political power for which all specific political powers are derived, the international independence of a state combined with the right and power of regulating its affairs, internal affairs and foreign affairs, dictation. The words of our prophet are clear. There is no such mention of sovereignty and no mention of more being separate from the law. For those who wish to challenge this, let's look at the words of the prophet himself and see what he says. I know that all true American citizens are identified by national descent names to answer and supply, apply to the free national constitution for this free national republic of the United States of America, Prophet Noah Dwali. I, the prophet, was prepared by the great God Allah to warn my people and repent from their sinful ways and go back to the state of mind, to their forefathers' divine and national principles, that they are to be law abiders and receive their divine right as citizens according to the free national constitution that was prepared for all free national beings, Prophet Noble Ali. The wealth of all national government, gold and silver, and commerce belong to the citizens alone and without your national citizenship by name and principles, you have no wealth. And I am hereby calling all true citizens that stand for national free government and the enforcement of the Constitution to help me in my great missionary work because I need all support from true American citizens of the United States of America, Prophet Noble Jurali. As should be seen, the Prophet was clear in, in, in that more Americans are part of the free national republic. And he called for the enforcement of the Constitution. Great seal order has been and will continue to be heavily involved with the civic teachings of Prophet Noble Duali. But there are clear differences in what may seem similar to the naked eye, but, we have, but have a clear difference when understanding is developed. In order for there to be true sovereignty on any land, there must exist a birthright tied to it. If those who are claiming to be sovereign have no existing birthright, then they have no inherent sovereignty. Colonization does not produce sovereignty. It only produces military occupation, and all those born in the lineage of the occupying force exist as occupiers themselves. As the ancient ones, Moabites, Moors, Moorish Americans, Asiatics, our birthright directly ties to this land, and it is within our natural right and inherent right to have sovereignty as a people on this land. As the original grantors, and recognizers of the Albion family seeking to escape the enslavement in Europe, it is us and only us who can be sovereign on our land. As Moors, though, we must, act, we must understand that sovereignty is not individual. That goes against the principles taught to us by the prophet. We are, in fact, to, we are to be, act as, exist as a nation. Black's Law Dictionary, Fourth Edition, defines nation as a people, aggregation of men, existing in a form of an organized rural society, usually inhabiting a distinct portion of the earth, speaking the same language, using the same customs, possessing historic continuity, and distinguished from other like groups by their racial origin and characteristics, and generally, but not necessarily, living under the same government and sovereignty. As it, as it, as it is clearly seen, people make up a nation and that the sovereignty exists within the nation, not the individual natural person themselves. At the establishment of the Constitution for the United States of America, it was the goal of the Moors and the European sons to establish a Republican form of government that will protect the individual unalienable rights of the people. These rights go back to, to natural law as well as Muslim, Muslim customary law that in itself is rooted in the natural happenings of nature and how we as spirit man align ourselves and operate with and within the circumference and harmony of it. The Moore's Divine National Movement is rooted in the enforcement of the Constitution, as said by Prophet Nobar Drew Ali himself. Great Seal, as an organization, first started as a club within the Moore's Divine National Movement, Moore's Science Temple of America, and has been a leader in the teachings of the, of the governmental side and principles of nations as taught by Prophet Nobar Drew Ali. More Divine National Movement, More Science Temple of America, Great Seal Order, does not teach separation from the Republican form of government expressly established in Article, Article 4, Section 2 of the United States 
to guarantee to every state in this union a Republican form of government and to protect each of them against invasion and on application of the legislature or, or the executive when the legislature cannot be convened against domestic violence. We are to be people upright and righteous in acts, deeds, and spirits. The prophet demanded that we be law-abiding American citizens. The prophet called the American Constitution one of the greatest documents of all time. Today, many of the tenets of the Prophet Committee's European Sovereign Citizen Movement mimic the teachings of Prophet Novo Dwelly. But it is wise for us as Muslims to stay clear of any and all activity related to their government, their movement, for it is, it is not for us. This is our home, and we are to stand for the original founding principles of the building of this nation. But in order for us to stand for them, we must also know what they are. Morris has to be diligent studiers of law and all of its forms, understanding the origin and the forms it has taken over the many centuries. As founding members of the Republic, it is our reality to stand for those original principles of the nation, to understand that this will amount to a great study and has, to, and has been, done, been the goal of great seal to bring Morris into the understanding of the different transitions that have taken place. In reading a law document, the slightest change in wording can amount to a huge change in meaning, such as for and of. The prophet was very clear in his message, and his use of wording in documentation, once properly understood, leaves very few stones unturned. The message was and is clear and needs no interpretation, only understanding of the language used to relay the message. Today, the government has made it clear that all sovereign citizens are domestic terrorists. Today we look at the third threat, the sovereign citizen movement, and that's taken from the FBI website. Let's, uh, let's make this clear once and all. All those reading and or wishing to discredit the Moore's Divine National Movement, Moore's Science Temple of America, Order of the Great Seal, we Moors, Moors Americans, Asiatics, do not claim to be or not part of, do not describe to European sovereign citizen extremist movement. We are Americans the aboriginal Americans, and which only to uphold the Constitution for the United States of America and its founding principles. We stand for love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, and must be a good moral, moral character and standing. We are to have, an, have no ill intent nor will towards our fellow man, unwarranted. We proceed in peace and do not engage in civil disturbance or terrorism. Islam, Islam, Islam. Let it be clear. Islam, that is so clear. Islam, <laughs> very clear. That is very clear. I love it. I love it. I love it, family. And with that, uh, oh, man, I'm, I don't even know what to add to that. <laughs> there's nothing, there's really nothing more to add to that but to open up the phone lines. I do see two people dropped off after <laughs> after you read that article, She. Two people dropped off the uh, the the, the queue to ask their questions. So I'm assuming that with that article that you just read, their question was indeed answered. I am going to open up the phone lines with the little time that we have left. Oh, oh, let, um, let me add something. Let me add something. Yeah, please do, please do. Quickly, let me add something quickly, and and this is an example of why we honor Brother Bay as a grand chief because he's speaking on behalf of matters that affect all Moors, not just Moors that belong to some group or some Indeed. temple. He's speaking as Indeed. as a representative. Right? Because, mm-hmm. you know, he's he's part of the government. Indeed. But just like Noble Juali taught us. The people raised him to raised him using their sovereign power. The people raised him, yeah. and he has an obligation to speak on behalf of the people. Whereas, if you go check the record on grand sheiks who have spoken up about stuff, they slide in more science temple instead of saying more divine and national movement. Mm-hmm. And they would almost omit that. 
they wouldn't even bring up Moorish Divine and National Movement, even though that seal is on their charter. And if there's a seal for the mm-hmm. Moorish Divine and National Movement, then it's probably very important because Moorish Science Temple has a seal, and they think that that's important. So, because, because there's a seal for Moorish Divine and National Movement. Right? So, article. And um, make sure you send that to me so we can send it out to the Moors out here, too, who want to play with, go authenticate stuff and all that. <laughs> Islam and, and gratitude, more by Islam, more. Indeed. All right, so we're going to open up the phone lines. It's Right now it is, uh, my time is 2040. We have about 20 minutes to the last feed. Um, I'm going to open up the phone line. Um, one moment. All right, so first caller, 443769, 443769, you're on the air. Please state your appellation. Islam, Islam, Islam. I am Hassan Ghazi over in Northwestern Max. I'm house, my family. Islam, Islam, Islam. Islam. I just um, I wanted to um say that this was awesome to hear for me because all three of you uh, are very instrumental in my growth. Um, start off with you, Mother, uh, Mother Teresa. You know, when I was you know taking uh, nationality and birthright seriously, you know, at the end of 2014, and you and I were like. You know, like on the phone, heavy. You were very, very helpful and instrumental. You never, like, you know, what I mean, gave me any like brush off or anything like that or whatever. And you made sure you gave it to me straight. Uh, that I wanted to put on the record, uh, Brother Cujo. When I had my little issues last year or whatever, you know, what I mean, dealing with them policy enforcers, you kept it straight with me um, and made sure that I always kept a level head. You know what I'm saying, uh, Brother Ramiel? You always kept me in check with civics all the time. So that's one thing I always enjoy. I mean, I'd be trying to make it to everybody's classes as much as possible, Um, whether it's the YouTube classes, whether it's the uh, podio classes. I really do try my best to make them, but it's so uh, exciting for me. I'm like a kid right now sitting on a magic carpet with graham crackers and and apple juice, like, uh, because you guys um, are very instrumental, like, and I, I let people know, you know what I'm saying, like, Really, at the end of the day, when it comes to certain, you know, territories, if people are close to you guys, to reach out to you guys. So, um, because I, I really know if it wasn't for you guys assisting me and how you assisted me, I wouldn't be able to really kind of have the perspectives that, that I have, including when it comes to analyzing anything that, you know, uh, any of our master teachers have said. So uh, I just wanted to say excellent, excellent form. Uh, thank you guys so much for that treat, and I yield the floor. Islam, peace and love, family. Islam, no. Islam, more. Peace and love. Somebody's muted. Did um, uh, Sister Cherise, did she mute herself? I think, I think so. She may have uh, gotten... Islam. Uh, gotten, <laughs> okay. Islam? Islam. Ramiel, you <laughs> Brother Romeo, you hit it on the head. Yeah, I was on mute. I had to mute okay. it. Uh, I had to mute myself uh, first because I heard that, you know, the background distortion uh, with the caller, uh, Brother Hassan. I do thank you for calling in, Brother Hassan, and thank you for the kind words. Um, I'm going to unmute you just to ask if you have a question. I had to mute you again uh, just for the background distortion. You know, I wanted to just be clear uh, if you do have a question. So I'm going to unmute you uh, again just to let me know if you do have a question. Okay, here's, here's my question. Yeah, I'm, let me close the door because we're here at, Mar- at the Marvel Resource Center here at Mecca. And uh, Mother Marge, you know, doing here, we got a Taj lecture on. We usually play Taj. Sometimes so I apologize for the background noise. Um, um, my, my question that I think would be very good to put on record for all to come. Um, 
I would like for the family, and may you please express the importance of declaration over proclamation. With that, I yield the floor. Islam, peace and love. Islam. All right, Brother Kuja, would you like to take that question first? Islam. Um, if you if we look at the concept of nationality and that it has to be announced by the individual who has it. Right? Um, in certain instances it might be enough to just yell it out. You know what I mean? Like Joel even told you, I brought you something that you can scream about. What are you going to be screaming? You're going to be screaming that you're a more. Mm-hmm. You're going to be screaming that you're not Negro, black, colored. Mm-hmm. In certain, then in other certain instances, you know, screaming might not be enough. You might have to actually put this to paper to make the point that you're trying to relay that, you know, lying in the street isn't going to help. Maybe you write it down. Right? So, um, I don't get caught up in is it proclaim or is it declare or whatever because it, it's both. You know, it's not one or the other. Yeah, Noble Jewel, you said proclaim, but that was back then when you better say something. If you're mute, then they're they're assuming you're a slave because slaves don't talk. Slaves shut the hell up. They only talk when spoken to and ask to reply. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, you better proclaim something. You know, but the declaration, right, declaration of independence, mm-hmm. right, the declaration of the United Nations, human rights and all that stuff, mm-hmm. right, that's what the declaration is, because that's that instance, that's how, that's what it is, like, it's not, you know what I mean, it's not serious like that but it, but again it comes down to these outside forces right that cause the falsehood to be mixed with truth because truth, truth stands alone there's no falsehood there it's falsehood that comes and mixes itself with truth for there to be truth and falsehood strangely mixed because truth is not going anywhere near falsehood, but falsehood will gravitate toward truth in order to try to taint it. So the falsehood is coming in, wrong perspective. Right? And again, people outside are creating this, that, that you know what I mean? You know, are, are we sovereign? What do you mean? Are, if you're a nation, what do you mean? When you say you're a Moorish American, what do you mean you're what do you mean you're not sovereign? How can you not be sovereign if you're a part of a nation? Right? So it's really just clearing up how we look at things and realize that everything doesn't have to be fine tooth combed. Some things could get the pass because it is what it is. We, we, it, it doesn't. We, it doesn't have to be. It is what it is, and then we're trying to dissect it more to see how deep it is. We already know how deep it is because it is what it is. Let's just go to the next stuff. Now you have the floor, Islam. Islam, Grand Sheikh Ramia. Yes, man. No, I think he made that point clear, but I did want to um, address a specific uh, topic about. The sovereignty issue, if um, if if I may. Yes, of course. Okay, so 
I wanted to address address something that a lot of people um, continue to ask about because one of the concepts or two of the concepts that, um, or three of the concepts actually that are being introduced into um, or attempting to be infiltrated into uh, the Moore's Divine National Movement is the fallacy of the 9-8 number, birth certificate authentication, and the creation of the trust to be to operate in the private. These three concepts are, are strictly rooted in the, in the European sovereign citizen, citizen movement. Now, let's address the issue of the falsehood of the 9-8 number. Okay, let, I want it to be clear to all those who are listening. Okay, Moors do not need nor should be getting a 9-8 number. I don't know if I can need to say it any slower or any clearer so people understand that. Do not get a 9-8 number. It is a complete falsehood for anyone to think that, number one, if you think that you can, on your application, tell these people, these entities, this uh, uh, de facto governmental entity, that you have a, a corporation that's located in a different country, if you have been allowed yourself to be ignorant enough to think that they can't make a phone call to that embassy of that nation or to a, a, a clerk in that district that you're claiming to have uh, or operate a, a, a business in to find out if it's true, then, then you're lost. The mere fact that you set up the 9-8 number based on a fallacy. I have spoken with uh, high-ranking IRS agents to have this conversation with them. They do have a list of people who are getting 9-8 numbers. Okay, like any other business would have, this is the reason you get a 9-8 number because you go on a list, and with being on a 9-8, having a 9-8 number, you actually go and are scrutinized even more. Number two, if anything that you put in that 9-8 number, once it is proven to be false and a lie, okay, a creature of a falsehood, 100% of everything that's in there or that has been um, been made, any finances that have been made, 100% of those are able to be levied simply because you lied. So you can lose everything, and I do mean everything, not 50%, not 25%, everything, because the whole thing is the foundation of a lie. In order to get to 9-8 number, which is supposed to be out of the jurisdiction of the IRS, you have to say that your corporation or your company exists in a different nation. You have to make up a phony address to give to them to do that. Number two, the authentication of the birth certificate. You can't be the, the, the word author, authority, has the root word author, which means the person who is the inventor or the creator. The inventor or the creator always has absolute authority. No clerk, no clerk in this, in this country is going to give you an original document. No original document goes out of the hands of the author. It does not work that way. So even when you're authenticating, you're being allowed to use it, which means that the author still maintains authority over it. And when you create the trust that they're telling you to take them, take it, create a trust, start a business, do all these things, when you create the trust and put it in there, you're only using it. And part of the reason is because there's a finishing process that's supposed to happen. This is where, again, I, I spoke on this on Facebook at one time when I said the prophet told us, do all your business in the name of the prophet or the more science temple. What is supposed to be happening is you're supposed to be taking those trusts, your assets, and we're supposed to be building the financial leverage of our nation, which means that you're supposed to be adopting your trust into your nation. That creates a jurisdiction over your trust with your nation. And you're supposed to have a visor, i.e. what will be called a secretary, who actually has an amicable relationship with the de facto jurisdiction, and that's who's supposed to be um, continuing to do the business for you of removing the birth certificate out. But that means that more than different um, 
areas need to be setting up different tribes and we need to be, you know, they need to be setting up juristic societies, all those things. So Moors are putting cart, the cart before the horse and getting caught up in this game that these agents are teaching you when you really don't know the end result, you don't know what you're doing, and you're going to end up losing all your stuff. Because you're not studying. All your questions could be answered if you just simply study. Moors don't get 9-8 numbers. No country, no nation goes to another nation to get a tax number. So when any nation, China, um, Afghanistan, Russia, they create their own fouling systems, which is what we as Moors are supposed to do. The visor should have, have a filing system that creates a jurisdiction for the nation within how things are filed. That's what nations do. Nations don't go to other nations and say, hey, um, let me get your permission to be a nation. You know, you get recognition, recognized, but this, these are the things that are supposed to be happening to finish what you're doing. So you're being taught something that, that's not taking you back to nationhood. This is where you're getting the sovereign citizen hoopla, garbage. It's supposed to take you right back to your nation, which is what the prophet said. Do all your business in the name of the prophet or the more assigned temple, Islam. Islam, Islam, fam. And you know what? I, just, I wish we had more time, honestly, because that you, you touched on something um, that is so critical. You know, people who are so desperate, and truly that's what it is, is they, they, they're acting out of desperation of trying to separate from um, this beast system so bad that they will just jump headfirst into this information, not thoroughly ingesting this information so that they know how to react when certain situations arise. And um, I definitely want to bring this up as another talking point for another show. And, um, you know, but, but for, you know, I, I, we don't have enough time, unfortunately. But, again, Grand Sheik Cujo from Canaan Moors, Grand Sheik Ramiel El Bay from the Great Seal West, I thank you guys for being some examples of, what a sheik is supposed to represent or the work that you put forward for our nation and how you make it so that it's very, very basic, very clear for people to understand in this confusing times what it is that they need to do, which is essentially buckle down and study. Do not go out there trying to attempt something that you do not fully understand. You will get caught up in things that you don't want to get caught up in. You know, every Big Brother's always watching, regardless of what anybody say. Big Brother's always watching. Brother Ramiel, you touching the IRS is keeping track of everything. There's a paper trail with everything that you do, from you swiping your card, you know, your your, your credit card to, to buy some some food to, you know, you you purchasing a metro card. They're able to keep track of this. So I just want to again thank you guys for everything, um, and I'm gonna close the show out with that. Peace and love to all the mourns. Um, Islam. 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 Much love. Islam. Islam.